are talking the latest news today. Crypto lender BlockFi filing for bankruptcy as the FTX fallout spreads. It's the latest in a series of crypto bankruptcies following obviously FTX, Voyager, and Celsius. Here to talk about this, the shakeup, and so much more is Kevin O'Leary, star of ABC's uh, Shark Tank. Kevin, always good to be with you. Welcome back. No shortage of news any of these days. No, none at all. I mean, it's, it's uh, and, and to be expected, you know, uh, this uh, huge shock wave that went through the financial services industry, I don't consider it just crypto, but uh, obviously the FTX collapse is going to have some peripheral damage and you're starting to see it happen. And I think there's more to come. So, you know, I was excited to get you on, obviously to talk FTX, you've been doing the rounds. I know you've been talking about this to death. So I do want to talk about many other things happening in the market, but how can we not talk about FTX? Obviously, uh, you were a major investor in FTX, you were a spokesperson. So first and foremost, you know, how, how are you doing today, right in this moment? What's the latest? What's going on in your head? Frame it up for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I, you know, just to, just to be transparent and, and open about it, I was an investor in FTX International and an investor in FTX US, and I was a paid spokesperson. And so those are all facts, and I'm, I'm living with them every day. This was not one of my good investments. This was a bad investment for a whole host of reasons. Luckily, I'm fortunate that this particular investment, both the ones in FTX, the accounts that I had in FTX, with millions of dollars in them and the ownership of FTX US was not in a fund that had other LPs. I owned it 100%. Uh, we hadn't made the decision to diversify yet. We were waiting to see if FTX would go public and how regulation was going to come forward before we put other people's money at risk. This was all my money. So I'm thankful for that. Of course, I hate losing money, but it's not going to change the way I operate or what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. I'm going to continue to be an investor. This is not about crypto. This is about bad policy, bad regulation, or lack thereof, if you want to put it that way, and some very weak compliance management. That's what's happened to these companies. It doesn't change the potential of what crypto is going to be, but certainly it was a hit. There's no question about it. And, you know, it's embarrassing for me, obviously. Uh, so much uh, due diligence had already occurred. I mean, if you listen to, if you look at the cap table of who was investors in in this company it's the who's who of financial services and so i'm one of them we're all embarrassed we, f we feel foolish and but luckily when i look at the long term thank goodness i make more good investments than bad ones that's the way i look at it <laughs> yeah and and I, and I think that's that's a fair um statement kevin i mean have you spoken to sam i know i believe you had a conversation with him right after the fall have you have do you speak to him on a daily basis not on a daily basis, but again, let me be transparent and clear about what occurred. I was in Dallas, Texas, um, doing a keynote remarkably to a group of graduating cohorts of engineers and others at the University of Northern Texas. I think that's where it was. Uh, we got out of that speech and th that, 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 that actual uh, discussion that day was about how disruptive crypto was, so it's kind of ironic. I'm at the airport waiting to take off and I get a call from one of my um, team members who is looking at the situation saying, hey, listen, Kevin, why don't we buy FTX? If, if it's really on the, on the desk for sale, if, if CZ is going to buy it for between six and eight million dollars, why don't we buy it? And why don't we, why, why can't we be part of that? Because remember, FTX had prior just done a round at a 32 billion valuation. And this was before any of this nefarious stuff was, was flying around. It was the Thursday. And so it wasn't clear to me whether it was six or eight billion that they were looking for to clear the demand, or if you want to call it the run on the bank. But I needed to know the real number before we could syndicate that amount of capital. That's a lot of money. And so I called a contact there that I knew worked on the balance sheet, and I just got a voicemail. So I left it with that individual. And then maybe eight, two minutes later, Sam called me back. And I said, Sam, look, I know you're uh, you know, going through a lot of pressure right now with this cash call and uh, the whole thing with uh, Binance and everything else, but it, I, I can't do anything with this or get involved unless I know what the number is. And he said, the number's eight, not six. I said, okay, that's all I need to know. 
And that kind of a number, believe it or not, is not that big for sovereign wealth funds. And so, uh, and I work with them in the indexing business, so that's when I started making calls. And there was a fair amount of going back and forth uh, that afternoon. We delayed takeoff um, from the runway because I didn't want to lose signal. We were dealing with uh, some sovereign wealth funds agents at that time. And then Gensler went on the air about three o'clock and um, he made it clear that this, there was a hammer coming down. And the minute that occurred and the regulator was going to get involved and then these nefarious claims and allegations started, that option of syndicating it with sovereign wealth uh, was no longer an option for obvious reasons. And so I didn't call Sam back, I texted him back, said it's not going to happen. And that was the end of that. And then over the weekend, the alleged hack occurred. Um, my accounts are, have zero in them. There is no uh, accounting records there. They've been scraped. Uh, I talked to many other institutions about those accounts over the weekend. Um, we were talking with our compliance departments and our lawyers, obviously, and um, that's where it stands today. Obviously, and I want to make a comment about this, uh, this is a tragic story, not just from a financial collapse, but it's a human story. It's, it's an un unbelievable story. It's probably going to be told, um, you know, for years to come. And I, the, the chapters haven't even been written yet. We're not even in the first chapter yet. Everything's allegation and insinuendo. We don't know anything yet. And so I, I'm uh, trying to keep an open mind about it. I'm not happy. I don't like losing that much money, but it doesn't change anything that I'm going to do tomorrow morning. Yeah, so just a few other questions because I, you know, you've obviously seen it. It's gone viral. The clip where you said that you would still uh, perhaps back Sam Bankman Fried in another, you know, should he, should he resurface? You, you know, know, the question was, is this because. That, that question was taken completely out of context. I understand okay. how it was edited. That's fine. But let me explain what that was about just to clear the air. I've made a comment for years now in the context of entrepreneurs, and particularly broadcasted by Shark Tank for 14 years, that I am not scared of investing in, in entrepreneurs that have had catastrophic failure because I find, both for men and women, that the, the sting of failure really motivates people to, to, to figure out what they did wrong and not do it again. That's, that's experience. That's what it is. Now, when that when that interview was, was taking mm -hmm. place, it was at the beginning of the whole shakeout and the, and the rumor mill of, uh, of what was going on between Binance and, and FTX. And so, you know, I didn't know the situation. Now, obviously, Sam is currently not investable while he's under alleged investigation. Okay. Okay. But it's, it's so no, I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't be allowed to. But the point was okay. we were talking about whether or not I would invest in entrepreneurs that have failed. And the answer still is yes. But obviously, the conditions have changed. Remember, this story okay. changes every hour. I mean, I'm relieved to hear that answer from you, Kevin, because obviously it's not just a question of failure. Obviously, people, you know, have failed businesses have come back and done better and greater things. But, you know, he, he took billions and used it for personal use. So it's a question of ethics and not but just I didn't, a failed I, business. I, no, no, nobody knew at that time that that had occurred. Right. And, and right. you know, it's still being investigated. So look, I'm, you know, I've said to people, look, I'm sorry, obviously that was taken out of context, but I just want to make it clear here. I, I do invest in entrepreneurs that fail. No entrepreneur gets it right every time. So, you know, t to me, it doesn't change who I am or what I do or how I support entrepreneurs. But no, I don't, in, I don't investigate in people that are under investigation. I can't, and nor would I. It's now up to Sam Bankman Freed to clear his name. He knows that. He's going to have to do whatever he can and, and come out and explain what happened. I'm, I want an explanation. Every investor does. Are you kidding? Like, what, I'm sure what? you do. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I guess my, my question, for, because you obviously made a name for being the shark that cuts through the BS. You see through the BS of others. So the question is, what did you miss with Sam? How did you miss those red flags? And I know it could happen to anyone, but what, what yeah. was the error on your part? How did you miss it? You know, the truth is, and Danielle, I, I have to be honest about this too. I don't get it right every time. I don't. I've made thousands of investments. They're not all winners. Uh, this one uh, was just, you know, all of us that have talked about this, all of us on that cap table, and we've all talked to each other. Uh, you know, we're stunned. We're just stunned. And 
but we don't have any answers yet. And so I, I would actually like to know how this one went down. And there's lots, if you just go online and see the due diligence that was done, you know, it's alleged. Again, I keep saying alleged because the stuff that goes out there on the internet, a lot of the stuff is garbage, but it's alleged that Bain was hired to do the due diligence for Tiger. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than Tiger. And so I'd like to find out more about that. I'd like to find out more about the other members on the cap table. We all look like idiots. And, you know, I'm the first to admit it.